action going on there. <laughs> Bit of a shame that one couldn't happen for him in the heat. Yeah. That was a good one. Yep. So here we are, starting, about to start. Super Grom, semi-final number two, with Van Taylor, Frank Nutter, and Taylor Brangwin. Brangwin. Here we go, it's just kicked off, and so has the wind. We kept, <laughs> the wind keeps trying to take the tan away from us, so yeah. that's why I have to keep popping out. But, um, got the Silas, the Gold Coast, Bodyboard Club president running around with the star pickets, keeping things in line as he usually does. Yeah, if it wasn't for Silas uh, organising this event and keeping it afloat, um, there's a lot going on here behind the scenes. Here he is now walking past us, doing all the hard work. Like, what a worker. Um, you know, w without him, you know, events like this wouldn't happen. And he just just keeps him, keeps him going. You know, he keeps it all the work done behind the scenes and basically making our job easy you know he's doing all the hard work for us look at him go <laughs> look at him go do you want a job i'll give you 15 dollars an hour <laughs> oh mate he's worth more than that oh um, yes uh, yeah, he's, he's not on super grommet wages i should have i should have realized he's not on super grom wages <laughs> no but, he's done a lot of work to bring um a lot of revenue to the gold coast bodyboard club and make awesome events such as this and uh, hosting a few of the other events this year. And he can swing a hammer. He definitely can. <laughs> no, good on him. He serves great. He's a top bloke. And like I said, it wouldn't be uh, what it is without him. Thanks again, mate. So we're in semi-final number two of the Super Groms. Everyone's still waiting their turn for their first wave. Yep. Looks looking pretty tricky and you can see that tide's filling in. When you look north down the beach, you can notice a little bit more water. Yeah, I feel like the options are going to change around very soon for the finals. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bit, a bit different, which isn't always a bad thing. No. I think they might be sitting in not a bad spot there with some of those... Yeah, that one's promising. Yep. Van. Little van. Sometimes those 360s, when it fades off, just get a bit hard on the finish, don't they? They do, yeah. It's hard to stick on them. Taylor's put a score up on the board, and so is Van. Just waiting for Van's one to upload, but... Still 17 minutes left, so it's only just begun. Here we go. White's had a little look, but just didn't want to didn't want to enter that one. Rotter and White just had a little look at a right-hander then and just got pushed off the back. Conditions are a little bit on and off. He's back again. My favourite competitor to, for today, I've just been telling the commentators, uh, telling Rob and uh, mentioning that you are my favourite person to watch out in the water and, um, and definitely worth keeping an eye on out in the water, the way you link it up. And remind me, remind everybody at home how old you are. Ten. Ten years old. Very well done, mate. High five. Hardy Fletcher winning the Super Groms round... Two. Semi-final. Semi-final yep. heat number one of the Super Groms, mate. That was... It was you were spectacular to watch out there. You were getting link-ups right through. Ten years old and it was so good to watch. You know, you were, you were definitely in front from the start right through to the finish. And all your hard work has paid off. How are you feeling? Are you getting a bit tired? Yeah, kind of. You've done a lot of work today. You've done a few heats. But now you're down to the business end of the day in the final, and I think all your hard work has paid off. So congratulations, mate. Well done again. Thank you. Well I, done, buddy. I look forward to uh, seeing you in the final. You've done a lot of hard work, and you definitely deserve it. So thanks, thanks again. Thanks. You're very welcome, mate.
See you in the final. Yep. yep. Good luck in the final, mate. Yep. One of my favourite competitors to watch today, and the winner of the last semi-final. Um, I think so. There's a nice little ride from White, but couldn't push through for the end of that section. So we just, as I was saying, Hardy Fletcher, he's been one of my favourite competitors to watch today. Ten years old. He's been in two divisions and he just won the Super Groms semi-final number, number one. Number one, I'm, I'm very confused. He, I think he knew better than me. He's been surfing all day and he, he should be doing my job, perhaps. Oh, you weren't getting a past him, mate. He was <laughs> no, all over it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but he, he's definitely been one of my favourites to watch. He's just been linking moves up and surfing so good. At 10 years old, it's an amazing, amazing achievement. And um, everyone out there, definitely worth keeping an eye on on Hardy Fletcher in the future. He may have a name, he, he may be the next Ryan Hardy, but instead it'll be Hardy Fletcher. You never know, like that 10 years old and he's surfing as well as he is today, linking maneuvers right up to the shore and busting rolls off the inside section. Um, you know, it, it's, it just creates a lot of stoke. Well done to him, he's well deserved. So I look forward to seeing him in the final. But we are just under 14 minutes remaining on Super Groms semi-final number two and in the front we have Taylor in the white with a 5.5 Van Taylor in the red with a one wave score of 3.83 and Frank with no scores on the board as yet still 13 minutes remaining so there's still plenty of time for them to get a few waves yeah it's a pretty good achievement here from Frank just to get through to this um semi-final he's uh, only been competing for a short amount of time and uh, yeah he's absolutely picking up the stoke of bodyboarding and getting right amongst it so awesome to see him making it through to some semis absolutely at such a young age you just got to get out there and give it a go like anything could when you're as young as that uh, anything could change over the next few years you could go from not getting third to right through to just dominating events, you know, a lot can change, you know, and um, we're very happy to have Frank and Van and Taylor and all these guys down at these events competing at such a young age. It's, it's something special, really. Oh, if Frank's anything like his old man, he's going to be something to watch out for in the future. Oh, fair dinkum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his old man out there with him at the moment, Grant, he's, all, he's one of the key members of the Gold Coast Bodyboard Club. Yep, yep. Always helps to set up, always... Uh, one to rely on to do any jobs around the place. Him and his missus Shannon, or mm -hmm. they're two key members. They're a key family to the Gold Coast Bodyboard Club, really. Oh, well done to them for helping out. And yeah, it's, um, the, these bodyboard families are, are what um, helps keep these young guys going, you know. And uh, without the support of their parents, it'd, it'd make it really hard, you know. And it's much appreciated from everybody in the industry. and and from the boys competing themselves. I'm sure they appreciate all their parents' love and support. Yeah, it was last year Last year at this event, it was the young fella, Louis, who jumped on the mic for a bit, and he's only just getting into bodyboarding back then, so he competed earlier today as well. So it's good to see it just develops bigger and bigger. Is that Frank's brother? Yeah, Frank's brother, Louis. Yeah, yeah, well. And since then, Shannon's taken up bodyboarding as well. And she's been competing with the girls at the Gold Coast. So. Oh, wow. Big yeah. family of bodyboarders. Ryder and Blue had a look at that one. It was gunning down the line, but he decided to give it a miss. All right. With uh, 11 minutes remaining on this uh, semi-final number two of the Super Groms. And the uh, winner... Coming right out in front, Hardy Fletcher with a 15.33 on semi-final number one. Winning the event, Hardy Fletcher, congratulations. And Morrison Parker coming in second with a 8.5. Just nipping out Noah Rollins, unfortunately, by a 0.03. Very, very close there. Uh, but in this heat, we have Taylor Brangwen in white, currently in first position. Van Taylor in second and Frank Nutter in third
So 10 minutes left for this heat, halfway through. And nothing crazy been put down yet, so it's still anyone's game. The surf becoming a little bit more challenging as it's switching the banks from the outside to the inside. Kind of hitting both of them doesn't always, doesn't make it easy on the middle of the tide sometimes. Makes it a lot more difficult to choose a good opportunity to pull off any maneuver really. Now watch this space guys because in about nine minutes time we will have the junior semi-final coming in so there's going to be some pretty epic epic bodyboarding the junior semi-finals heat one and heat two and then into the all the finals so after this heat uh, we're going to be right into the uh the uh extreme end of the day where the best surfers of the day will be competing for the semi-finals and the finals right through to get uh get themselves a trophy and uh, and uh, into the final position. Well done to all the competitors who have competed through the day in uh, a little bit challenging conditions with this wind kicking up a few times through the day and um, putting in the effort. Ryder in white, picking that one off. Gave it everything. Did it looks pretty hard out there. It's actually starting to get a bit of a shorey on that inside too, isn't it? If you can get that link through, as you can see, uh, Hardy doing on his previous heat, getting him right through and rolling on the inside. Tide's coming up. We'll have a bigger tide around two to three o'clock this afternoon. Not one hundred percent sure on the tide times, but your tide is still coming in. Should be roughly one o'clock, between one and two o'clock for the high tide, so okay. should be finishing off on the high. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting day. You got to see the whole, the tide the whole way through from the very low to the very high for the whole event, which is, you know, it makes it makes it challenging to pick your position when you've got that those kinds of conditions because a lot of the times competitions can start in the medium tide and finish in the medium tide and run through a low tide, which makes it a lot easier. A lot can happen, hey, with a with a running tide. Um, there's a lot of breaks on the coast that some of them are heavy, heavily reliant on a low tide and then other places like Urumba are heavily relied on a high tide. So, um, you know, you'll get the good waves on the high, but then when the tide drops out, sometimes it's pretty challenging conditions, you know, and um, vice versa with other locations, you need the low, and when the tide comes in, there'll just be, waves will just disappear. Um, yeah, yeah, the Gold Coast is a hard one for high tide. There's not not too many places that um, really like the high tide, mm -hmm. unless you're hunting for a beach break and you're lucky. Yeah. But most of your, most of your general hit spots all like the low tide. Yeah, it, right. Except for the best kept secret, Duran Bar. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but it likes every tide. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think you, that's, you're very lucky. You know, you've got two world-class waves down here still. Um, and we, we've got some good waves, but they are very dependent on the swell, swell direction and the tide. Um, so to have all the elements in place, like the right wind, the right tide and the right swell, it's very thickle and you've got to be lucky to get them. And it takes a little bit of... Uh, uh, local knowledge or knowing someone that knows when they work. The, the secret's getting out up there too. A lot of these secret breaks aren't so secret anymore. Um, oh yeah, that's it. it. It's hard to keep Snapper a secret and D-Bar a secret, <laughs> but the rest of them that work on the other ties, we're not going to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I would, I don't, it doesn't bother me surfing with heaps of people, but I'd probably just have someone pun, uh, come up and give me a tune up in the surf if I talked about them. Well, that's it. And like, you know, um, it, nothing's a secret these days. Nothing Nothing sacred with social media, you know, people figure it out and people talk at the end of the day, there's not much you can do about it. Um, I actually run a surf report social media page and, um, you know... Oh, that'd be difficult. Oh, a lot of people <laughs> hate it, you know, like, um, but a, a lot of people love it, you know, people that don't directly live right near the beach like I do, a lot of people love it, but... Um, there is some people that are like, oh, don't tell anybody that it's going to be pumping there. And it's like, dude, everybody already knows. It's all good. Like, you know, um, 
Oh, it, at the end of the day, having heaps of people out in the surf, just more people to share the waves with. You don't. Yeah. Everyone, everyone can play fair. Everyone gets a good wave, and mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. has fun. Yeah, and I mean, if the people are new to the break, and you know they're hearing about it through my surf report page. Um, Obviously, they're not going to be picking off the waves with the, the locals that surf it on a daily basis. Here we go, Ryder and White up on a brutal one here. Couldn't quite get through the roll. Yeah, but that's it. And maybe a surf report's giving them the, the lowdown that it's not a good idea to go to that beach that day because it's out of their capabilities. Well, yeah, sometimes you can, uh, uh, depending on your wording, you can bum steer people sometimes. Not that I plan on doing that, but... Uh, you know, uh, you can give them a broad spectrum of places to surf and whether if they've got a little bit of inside knowledge, they'll know where to go. Otherwise, they've got a whole beach to choose from. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of areas. When it's good on the coast, usually it's good everywhere else. And, and people with different skill levels as well will decide to go where they want to go. Like uh, last week, for example, I had my little spot X that I went to and I knew there'd be a few people there like Cooper Stewart and, there's a, and uh, Shane McNally that I mentioned before, uh, they're always there because they live there. Um, and uh, But otherwise, everyone else will go to other locations. And yes, they will be pumping, but there's already so do 300 other people know that it's going to be pumping as well. So um, if you can handle the crowds, you're still going to score good waves, you know. And same where that's these little secret spots I surf, like they may be a lot more thickle and not as consistent but you get that one or two good waves and it just makes your day rather than surfing down in um, 300 people and getting four or five really good waves but then getting dropped in on two or three times it sometimes can ruin your day but everybody's got their own preference some people like beach breaks some people like little bombies some people like shoreys some people like point breaks we've got we've got a few options up there so yeah i'm someone who likes them all there's some days where I love paddling out in Snapper with the biggest crowd you ever see. Yeah. And some of the longest waves you'll ever ride. And same with Byron Bay at the pass. Sometimes I love that, but sometimes I also like going to a back beach and having the whole whole time to yourself. Yep, yep, yep. Only sharing it with a couple other people and probably the dolphins too. Here we go, rider in blue. The kids have been getting a lot more opportunities at the uh, second end of this heat. Super Grom's semi-final heat number two. Frank put a nice, nice ride on the, right, nice ride down there. Yep, trying to tuck it in, and it just didn't quite open it up for him. And he held the rail nicely, but couldn't get the push back through. Rider in red coming through the inside with a little spin, and just gets pushed off the back. That will be his second wave. Not sure if it will score because it was incomplete, but. Nonetheless, he's, he should have another wave on the board. Currently in the lead is Taylor. Taylor Brangwen in number one position in the White Rashi. In number two position, oh, sorry, I stand corrected. That, that was enough to push Van into first. He's got a high score of 5.83 and uh, he only needed a little score to get him into first, so he's currently up in the lead with a 9.66 Van Taylor, one of the Taylor family boys. Uh, Van is the youngest and uh, miniest Grom. Here he goes again on the inside. Couldn't quite get there for no. the open face. Looks, but... looks like he might run up. Oh, there's only one minute remaining. I, th I dare say that will be heat over unless he's going to pick off a Shory in there. Uh, but Van has jumped into the lead and we've got a replay. Um, in second place, Taylor Brangwin. Nice solid takeoff from um, from Frank on the one after that. I'm not sure if it got caught on the camera, but couldn't quite get to the end of it for any of the movers, but a good takeoff. Frank has only got one minute remaining and he needs a three point three point seven something to he's putting the effort in on he's on another wave right now, he really wants it. He's searching all the way for the end and couldn't quite get there. No, the waves haven't been kind to him, unfortunately. Uh, haven't been pushing through enough. Ah, but it's good to see him putting two scores on the board. Absolutely. Well done to Frank and the Super Groms. These guys are super young and, you know, for them to, to make it through to a semi-final is a massive achievement for, for someone that age. Um, yeah, they've made it through the round one into the semi-final. It's in a Future Pros event, you know, it's a massive achievement. People know who they are now, thanks to Absolute Streaming. 
um, making this event visible via YouTube across the world, broadcast and, and again inverted and convict for supporting these guys. Um, and uh, yeah, Ben from Inverted for just always being there and uh, hooking all the Grommies up with boards. There we go. That's the end of 